Welcome, everyone. Um, we've got a great speaker ahead of us. Um, this is Noah Kantritz with Python Packaging, a Zeitgeist. All right, welcome. Uh, I apologize for anyone that saw this was originally called uh, What's Coming in Python Packaging, but unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, in the roughly six months since I wrote the proposal, most of the stuff that I was going to say is coming soon has actually happened. So this will be more of a, a review of the last uh, 18 to 24 months. Thank you. So a review of the last 18 to 24 months of Python packaging development. Uh, but first, a little bit about me. I'm the infrastructure lead for the Python Software Foundation and one of the organizers of PyCon. Uh, by day, I do uh, server automation and operations work for balanced payments. Very involved in the Chef community, and I really like making things. Um, also, a disclaimer, this list is not in any specific order, not chronological, not order of importance. Uh, it's just the order that I could weave best into a presentation. So don't take this as an endorsement or disparagement of any particular features. So getting started, we have a couple of org chart changes in the Python community. Uh, the first major one was the creation of the Python Packaging Authority, or PyPA. Um, this is now a group operating outside of the CPython development team, although there is some overlap, some people participate in both groups, that's handling most of the non-standard lib packaging tool development and organizations. So that's things like PIP, setup tools, virtual env. All of that now lives under the PyPA umbrella organization. Second was the uh, appointment of the new packaging BDFL, Nick Coughlin. Um, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. He, he demoed it for me earlier, but never sure with these things. Anyway, he was appointed by Guido as the packaging BDFL. It just means that he can directly accept PEPs related for packaging uh, without the discussion moving on to Python dev. Anyone who's on Python dev probably understands why this is a very good thing. Uh, additionally, Rich Jones has taken back the mantle of BDFL for the Python package index itself. So he is uh, back on the, the saddle for managing anything where we need to break compatibility. We do try to file PEPs, and he's allowed to accept those if necessary. So on to the actual features. Uh, most of you have probably used the Python package index, or PyPI for short, uh, either to host your own packages or to find libraries to use. We made a lot of improvements to that. Biggest one in my mind uh, is a lot of TLS improvements. We actually use HTTPS now, um, and we support all the latest goodies like uh, strict transport security, so you automatically default to HTTPS, trying to keep it much more secure. Um, we also now offer perfect forward secrecy so that if keys are leaked, <clears throat> how would that ever happen? Uh, no one can decrypt past recorded traffic. Um, this one, uh, not actually as uh, recent as some of the other stuff I'm mentioning, but a lot of people don't know it exists. Uh, there is a JSON API of sorts for the Python package index. If you just add slash JSON to the end of either a package or version URL, you will get all the data of that page in JSON format. So if you have a, a reason to need all the packaging information you could ever possibly want, here's a really easy way to grab it. Uh, we now have a CDN uh, powering uh, the Python package index. So it's run by Fastly, who gloriously sponsors it for us. They do a geo-distributed caching system based around Varnish with an automated static fallback. So if our servers self-destruct, uh, we move to a uh, Bandersnatch managed static mirror in another data center. This has led to vastly improved performance for people that don't live outside the US, uh, since the servers are no longer a single box somewhere in Oregon, uh, and just generally improved stability. Uh, because of the CDN, uh, combined with the fact that a lot of the public mirrors were becoming increasingly fragile, many of them were breaking or no longer updating, had to be kicked every couple weeks or they'd fall out of sync, uh, we've now deprecated the public mirror network. So if you've previously read uh, Jacob Kaplan Moss's wonderful post on uh, how to use mirrors, please disregard all of that. Uh, my love to, to Jacob, and I'm very glad that he wrote that, but no longer needed. Um, we've removed the DNS entries for them, uh, and PIP no longer ships support for the public mirror network. Uh, and we have deprecated the Mirror Authenticity API. It hasn't been removed, but I believe it's scheduled to be removed in September. Also on the topic of mirrors, uh, PEP381 client has been the workhorse for maintaining local and internal mirrors for a very long time. It's now largely considered deprecated in favor of Bandersnatch. 
Um, if you would like to maintain a local mirror, and I'd certainly encourage it if you have large-scale deployments or if you just don't want to worry about us being down, even though fortunately that's now very rare, uh, Bandersnatch is definitely the tool to use. Uh, DevPI is also a somewhat recent addition. Uh, its primary function is not mirroring, but it can act as a partial mirroring tool. So whereas Bandersnatch largely is used for keeping mirrors of the entire Python package index, DevPy or DevPI uh, can mirror only what you access through it as a caching proxy. Uh, and finally, Warehouse. So Warehouse grew out of the now defunct Crate.io project, so don't go to Crate.io anymore. I think it's now being used by some other company. Uh, but it is going to turn into Python Package Index 2.0. Um, we have a demo site up at warehouse.python.org. Uh, it currently supports package installation, search, and most of the APIs. You cannot yet upload packages to it, uh, and I think user authentication is being added very shortly. On to uh, how do you actually get packages from those servers. So again, you might notice a pattern here. I think some of the most important stuff is around safety. Uh, so we've added in pip TLS verification, and we've deprecated external links and dependency links. So this means that you can now actually be relatively certain that you will be downloading packages in a safe uh, and verified manner. Also, PEP 453 landed when Python 3.4 shipped, or I guess it landed a little bit earlier, but it is now live. Uh, for those that don't know, Ensure PIP is the module that we are shipping, basically meaning PIP is now part of the Python standard library. Uh, not quite, it actually lives in a slightly different category, but functionally speaking, if someone installs Python 3.4 on any platform, be it from the source tarballs or in Red Hat or any other platform, it is expected that PIP will be available. Uh, this means we now can finally put easy install to bed. This is a very, very nice thing. So no more easy install pip. Uh, on to wheels. So uh, for those that have played with them a little bit, you've probably seen their vastly simplified installation format. Uh, notably, they don't require executing any code. So the wheels grew out of the old setup tools egg concept. Uh, instead of having a, a source distribution file that pip downloads, unpacks, and runs setup.py install, which is what it does now, that the, the wheel format has things effectively in the format that they need to be when they are installed on the system. So pip can just unpack the zip file in a very specific way, but you don't have to actually run any code to do installs. This means that uh, this means that installs are faster and much safer since you're not executing arbitrary code from the internet. Turns out that's not always a good idea. Downside, uh, wheels are definitely still a field of active development. Uh, if you have pure Python stuff, they're wonderful and you should use them now. If you have C extensions or other binary packages, uh, you may want to look and play with them a little bit before you, you go in whole hog. On Windows and OS X, because they have very stable and long-term platform level ABIs, it's relatively easy to know that if you compile it on one machine, it'll work on another. That's not quite the case with Linux. Uh, unfortunately, the wheel standard doesn't currently have any way to express the complexities of Linux ABIs, uh, but we are working on that. Uh, if you'd like to get started with wheel today, you can just pip install wheel, and instead of doing uh, sdist or bdist egg, you can do bdist wheel. Uh, and finally, on the getting side is a tool called Conda. This was written by Continuum Analytics. It's a relatively new entrant into the installer field uh, and main aim made, aimed mainly at scientific environments. Uh, it can be used as a general purpose installer, but there are some security concerns they're still working out. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless you need its uh, extra features, which are largely based around scientific packages, which need large binary large binary installations, things like scikit-learn, numpy, scipy, things like that, where you really don't want to be compiling the source, largely because of time and complexity constraints. Uh, if you're not doing heavy number crunching or scientific analysis, you may not need to be using Conda. On to using packages. So you've downloaded them. PIP has done some stuff, depending on the format. Now you want to actually use packages. So vnv is uh, the evolution of virtualenv. It shipped in Python 3.3. The script you call is slightly different. It's now pyvnv instead of virtualenv, but otherwise the internals uh, are vastly cleaned up and the usage is largely the same. Distribute is gone. Uh, big thanks to PJE for helping to merge setup tools and the community fork distribute back together. Like I said before, they're both now 
uh, operating under the PyPA and have resumed using the setup tool's name. Anywhere where you were installing distribute in any kind of scripts or anything, just replace it with setup tools. Uh, and finally, distutils2. Uh, it did briefly end up in the standard library under the name packaging. However, it ended up being removed because there were some concerns about implementations, and it's no longer under development. So if you were waiting for distutils2, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, and now making packages. So uh, improvements to the metadata, pip now supports the idea of pre-releases. So if you upload something with dash alpha or dash beta, pip will understand that and will only install them if specifically requested by the end user. So this means that you can do pre-release testing and release candidates in a sane manner. Uh, there's also PEP 426, creatively named Metadata 2.0. This is an, uh, trying to take all the metadata that we've sort of crammed into packages in weird places over the years, put it in one place, put it in JSON format, and have standardized values. Uh, as far as uploading packages, uh, so a lot of people use Python setup.py upload as their uploader. Um, uh, there is a new project called Twine, which is trying to pull all that update log or upload logic out of disutils. The advantage of this is we can update it in a much faster way than we can the standard library. We're not worried about maintaining compatibility and things like that in the same way. Um, Twine, I, I would highly recommend using it now. Disutils, for example, does not support TLS verification on uploads, uh, doesn't support the upload of previously created artifacts, things like that. Um, definitely check that out. I'm probably doing myself a disservice even mentioning it because it was shut down due to non-use, but PyPI SSH has been removed. I'm sorry to the 400 people that ever used it. Uh, and finally, the guide. Uh, previously called the Hitchhiker's Guide to Packaging, now the Python Packaging User Guide is available at packaging.python.org. It's basically an expanded version of everything I'm talking about here. I uh, definitely rent checking it out. And the few things that are still coming soon, so like I mentioned, Metadata 2.0 is still under active discussion. It's sort of the blocker right now for most future efforts. Um, everyone's trying to sort of centralize around getting Metadata 2.0 before we all go off and use all the new metadata in new and exciting ways. Two other things that are right on the cusp of being discussed uh, is SDIS 2.0 and Wheel 2.0. Um, like I said, the Wheel format has some issues with binary compatibility. The SDIS format hasn't changed in, what, 12 years now? Things like that. Um, it's, it's about time for those both to get a, a once over, especially in light of the new metadata format. So uh, if you're interested in participating in those discussions, I will have slides for you in a moment. Uh, and also coming soon, like I mentioned, Warehouse. Uh, the hope is that sometime in the next six months range that it will be full-featured enough to replace the existing PyPI code base, at which point we will just switch it from warehouse.python.org to pypi.python.org and welcome our new warehouse overlords. Uh, I do definitely recommend that if you have anything that's doing a lot of non-standard scripting or using APIs directly on PyPI, that you try them with the warehouse.python.org test site and report any bugs you find. So when we do that switch over, you will not be suddenly surprised and broken. So. What if you'd like to help us out? So like I mentioned, the PyPA team has taken over a lot of the projects. Uh, they are sort of split, though. Uh, some stuff is up on GitHub, notably pip, virtual env, and warehouse are all managed under the PyPA organization on GitHub. And setup tools, PyPI, the old code base, uh, and the wheel libraries and tooling are under the PyPA organization on Bitbucket. So if you're looking to help out with these projects, just make sure that you end up in the right repository. There's also an IRC channel on Freenode IRC, Pound PyPA. A lot of the packaging developers, both from the PyPA team and from the standard lib team, even though most of those are the same people, uh, hang out in there. So if you have any questions or would like to learn more about how to help, just jump in there. Uh, we also have the venerable Distutil SIG mailing list. It's still going strong. Uh, it is definitely the primary communication point for most packaging discussions. Uh, there used to be another mailing list. Uh, if you were on it, you got a notification of this, but Catalog SIG has been merged into Distutil SIG. That was the old PyPI specific mailing list. Uh, so long live Distutil SIG. Uh, and finally, sprints. The warehouse team, uh, a few of them anyway, will be here and will be sprinting during the PyCon sprints on warehouse. So if you'd like to join them, uh, find Richard Jones or any of the other PyPA folks and ask them how to help out. And I'd like to close with just a few shout outs. Uh, first, Donald Stuffed. Most of you have never heard of Donald Stuffed, uh, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it up to Montreal. But I counted, he has worked on at least 90% of the things that I mentioned today uh, and basically runs Python packaging and makes all of this happen. Uh, we all owe him a beer.
Uh, and another shout out for Nick Coughlin uh, for taking the weight of being the packaging BDFL on his shoulders. Uh, I have certainly disagreed with him in the past, but he is the hero Gotham needs. Uh, and finally, our sponsors. Uh, just a quick shout out to some of our sponsors, Fastly, Rackspace, Dyn, PingDom, PagerDuty, DreamHost, and everyone else if I uh, didn't get you into my slide notes. Without them, we wouldn't be able to run PyPI or any of our other PSF services. So a big thank you to all of our sponsors, and thank you. And if anybody has any questions, if you could just go to the mic in the center and make sure you step towards Sorry. the mic. Could you actually go back to Donald's slide, because he's on our team. I wanted to get a picture of that to send to him. Thank you. Noah, as a uh, frequent uh, library perpetrator, I wonder, should I upload both SDISTs and wheels now? Yes. Uh, you should definitely still be uploading SDISTs. It will be a long time before everyone's installers are updated to support wheels. So legacy is legacy. And there's no downside to uploading both. If something supports wheel, it will use wheel, and life will be great, and otherwise, you get status quo. Could be worse. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be doing some improvements to the Linux ABI tagging. Are, can you give us any teasers about what that might look like? Is it going to be part of like PEP 425, or is this just in the air at this point? It's very much in the air. Uh, there's a lot of competing discussions about how best to handle it, uh, and I don't feel qualified to report on those uh, in my preparations for PyCon, since, like I said, I'm one of the organizers. I've been a little bit out of the mailing list for about two weeks now, uh, which is a long time these days which is pretty cool that it's, that's a long time in the, the world of packaging now. Hi. Do you know if there are any plans for virtual env wrapper to become part of the standard library? I don't think so, nor have I heard any uh, desire expressed on the part of the virtual env wrapper authors. Uh, stuff ending up in the standard library drastically limits its ability to, to change and evolve over time. So it's, it is a mixed blessing. Uh, virtual env, fortunately, was sort of stable enough and did exactly one thing, and we knew what that was. So it's not really a big deal. But virtual env wrapper is definitely still growing. So not sure that would really be best. So I just checked, and Debian still has ensure pip disabled in 3.4, their 3.4 package. Do you know if there's plans to reinstate that? There's a fix me comment, but. So <laughs> Barry is waving his hand. Uh, so so the, I, I kind of glossed over this a little bit. The deal is that the, the end goal is that if you install Python 3.4, you get pip. Ensure pip is the way that we are supporting that for our source distributions, but the, the actual pep only specified that pip be available. Some of our distributors, like Debian and Red Hat, uh, would prefer to not use ensure pip because they want to continue to manage pip via their tooling. So instead, of most of them are changing the Python virtual package to depend on the actual Python and on the pip package. Uh, so that they can continue to, to, like, if they have to do security releases or certainly uh, anyone that has to deal with long-term support releases can continue to use their tooling for that. But you can still, if you install Python 3.4 and pip is not available and working, it's a bug. Yeah, there was one thing with that. Um, I don't know if it's been fixed, but at least when you called pyvn, it would fail because it couldn't find ensure pip. There's an open Debian bug on that. Great. Thank you. Two questions, uh, maybe out of my ignorance with Conda, but as I understood, wills theoretically should solve the problem of distributing all the binary builds, right? So your accent that, oh, this is primarily for scientific computing. Could you elaborate on this? Will we need Conda, and what would be its role in this distribution business? I would certainly love if Conda was no longer necessary, but Conda uh, does a lot more than just managing Python stuff. Um, it's really designed to be uh, an install and workflow tool for scientists and number crunchers that don't want to know the details of what Python packaging even is. Uh, they just want to push a couple buttons and run something, and they get an environment to do their computing. Uh, I would certainly love if pip ends up being at that point. But like I said, Conda can also install stuff that's not Python related, I think. So I'm not sure that would really be in scope. Uh, there's definitely been talk at some point, for instance, Conda runs its own metadata servers. Uh, we would love to eventually merge that into Warehouse so that it can be a single ecosystem, even if it's two installer tools. Mm -hmm. And I forgot my second question, so thank you. <laughs> what would you recommend to host private packages? To host? Private packages instead of like pushing to PyPy, it's? DevPI, unequivocally. Uh, it is the best tool by leaps and bounds. OK, thanks. All right, thank you very much. We have a little time for questions going once, going twice. Okay, gone. 
Please join me in thanking Noah.